Hello and welcome to the video solution of the exercise problem 2D topological edge transport. As the name already implies, in this problem we're going to look at a two-dimensional topological insulator system and how it, how it behaves when an electric current is passed through it. A two-dimensional topological insulator is a system in which two counter-propagating spin-polarized edge channels exist at each edge, as for example pictured in this figure over here, while the bulk is insulating. Note that the edge here um, describes the boundary between the topological insulator with its non-trivial band structure and the normal insulator having trivial band structure, for instance vacuum. A notable example for a two-dimensional topological insulator system is a mercury telluride quantum well sandwiched between two cadmium telluride barriers. In this problem, we are going to consider several different device geometries of a 2D topological system, and we are going to apply the multi-terminal Landauer-Bittiger formalism to find out what happens when an electric current is passed through the device. Now, um, within the multi-terminal Landau-Bittiger framework, we can associate, if we have a system with n terminals, we can associate a current, I, to each terminal lead, as well as a voltage, V, to each terminal. Then, we can collect all the currents in a current vector, I, which is, if we have n leads, an n by one, vo n by one vector, and similar, similarly, we can collect the voltages, V of all the leads, uh, into the vector V, which is again has dimension, dimensions n by 1. Then, landau bittiger tells us that the current vector is related to the voltage vector by the conductance quantum, which is E squared over H, as well as the transmission matrix. The transmission matrix is an n by n matrix, which has the following form. So along its diagonal, it has n i's and r i's, namely the difference between them. For example, the first entry of the transmission matrix is, in, is n1 minus r1. And the last entry is n n minus r n. Now, these n i's, they describe, or they are, the number of modes in lead i. The Ri's describe the total reflection into lead I. The off-diagonal terms are Tij, or the Tij's. The Tij's are the total transmission from lead J to lead I. Note that the Tij is not in itself a probability, um, because it implicitly contains the sum over all modes in leads I i and j, so it can be a number uh, which is greater than 1. Now, let's say we want to apply this under bittiger formalism to the device geometry in figure A. In this case, we have a two-terminal device, so n is equal to 2. We assume that we inject the current in contact 1, as denoted by this little triangle here, and that we ground contact 2. So, therefore, we may write that the voltage vector, which contains, uh, the current vector, I'm sorry, which contains two terms, namely the currents in contacts 1 and 2, is equal to the product of the conductance quantum, as well as the transmission matrix, which for now we will leave in its general, most, most general form. So T is a 2 by 2 matrix. And here we have the voltage vector. Now, um, notice a few things. First of all, if we say that the current which is injected into contact 1 over here is I, then due to the conservation of current, the current which leaves contact 2, which is grounded, is also I. 
or minus i we, having the opposite sign because in one case the current is entering the, the contact or the lead in the other case it is leaving it. Um, then notice here that we call the voltage on contact 1 V whereas we set the voltage on contact 2 or lead 2 to 0. This is because we assume that contact number 2 is grounded. Now in the 2D topological insulator, there will be, as already mentioned, two edge channels at each edge. So in this case, we have two edge channels going from contact 1 to contact 2. One edge channel goes along the upper edge and the other one goes along the lower edge. And similarly, there are two channels going from contact 2 to contact 1. Again, one on the upper edge and one on the lower edge. The difference between the two is that they have opposite spins due to the um, spin momentum locking which occurs in a two-dimensional topological insulator. That's just a side remark. Um, but you can see here that the spin of the electrons which flow in the edge channels is different um, along each edge and for the two um, propagation directions. So as we said there are two edge channels going from one contact to the other therefore n1 is equal to 2 and similarly n2 is also equal to 2. Now we assume um, ideal ballistic one-dimensional edge channels so there is no reflection back into the leads therefore both r1 and r2 are 0. Now finally the transmissions T12 and T21 are equal to 2, the reason being that um, obviously there is there are two channels which are transmitted from contact 2 to contact 1, so that would be T12, one as already mentioned along the upper edge and the other along the lower edge. So we may rewrite this for our concrete case as the following and note that we have indeed um, that for each um, row the sum of elements is zero the sum of all elements is zero and for each column the sum of all elements is zero. This has to be um, fulfilled in general. Or this always has to be fulfilled. So now that we have um, rewritten this, um, or that we have tailored this uh, expression to our particular case, we can calculate, for example, R1212. R1212 is nothing um, but the two terminal resistance of this device and it's defined as the voltage on contact 1 divided by the injected current so V over I in our case and this is and this can be easily seen by just um, for example considering the first um, the first equation which which results from this um, from this expression that um, the ratio of V over I so the two terminal resistance is given by H over 2 E squared so half the resistance quantum basically. Now that we've um, calculated the two terminal resistance of this two terminal device, let's turn to the device pictured in B where we have three contacts or leads. Now we again inject the current into lead one while grounding contact three. Um, contact 2 is left floating, or alternatively we can measure the voltage um, at this contact, say with respect to ground. But the fact is that no net current flows in contact 2 because it's um, either left floating or being um, 
measured with a voltmeter which has a very high internal internal input impedance so that effectively this contact is floating. So now since we have a three terminal device we can write the equation the expression which results from the lambda vertical formalism is the following so again we have um, the transmission matrix and uh, again I will write it in its most general form So, so here is um, again the current uh, injected into contact one. There is no net current in contact two because it's floating or because it's um, connected to a voltmeter with a very high input impedance. There is um, the same current which enters um, contact one, leaves the device in contact three. We assume or we call the voltage at contact one V1 and that at contact two V2 and since we assume that contact 3 is grounded, we set the respective voltage to 0. Now, um, if we do the same kind of um, reasoning that we used um, here above for A, we can find out what the terms of the transmission matrix are. Um, and the diagonal terms will again be 2, since there are um, so the the diagonal terms will will be two since if we consider any um, of the of the contacts we can see that there are two modes or two edge channels um, in that contact so for example in contact three there is this one which is injected into the device which flows from 3 to 1 and there is one here along this edge which is injected from contact 3 and which goes to contact 2 therefore the number of, of modes um, is equal to 2 for any contact and since again there is no reflection all the R's are 0 now regarding the transmissions T we see that at any contact um, there is exactly one edge channel which is transmitted from that contact to any neighboring contact. So for example, for contact 2, there is one edge channel which is tra transmitted from 2 to 3. That's this one. So this means that this entry um, here, T3, 2, which is the transmission from 2 to 3, is equal to 1. Because that's just this edge channel over here. And the same kind of um, argument holds true for all the other TIJs. Um, so therefore, there are also one. So that means that this expression becomes that the vector of current is equal to E squared over H, the conductance quantum, times a matrix which contains twos on its diagonals and minus ones um, as the off-diagonal terms. Now again, um, once we've written down this equation here, we're basically finished since we can calculate all the qu quantities um, of interest. For example, we can calculate R1313, which is just the two-terminal resistance again, defined as the voltage V1 divided by the injected current. Um, if we solve this, um, uh, this system of equations, we, we will see that R1313 is equal to 2H over 3E squared. And similarly, if we want to calculate R1323, and that is just the voltage V2 divided by the current I, so R1323 is the voltage of this contact 
with respect to ground divided by the injected current which is injected here into contact 1 and which leaves the device in contact 3. This is given by h over 3 e squared. So what we see is in effect or it follows from this that v2 or it follows directly from this system of equations that the voltage v2 is actually just half of the voltage v1. So if we look at this um, this figure again, the schematic, if this terminal or lead or contact is at voltage and then some voltage v, then this contact will be at half of that voltage, whilst this one will be at zero or ground equivalently. Note that if this contact were to move or to be shifted slightly to the left or to the right, um, we would still obs obtain all the same results that we obtain here because we are assuming ballistic transport through ideal one-dimensional edge channels. So the distance between the contact or the edge, the, the, the lengths of the edge segments are, in this ideal case, um, they are not important in the sense that they do not um, they do not change um, they do not in any way influence the result since we are just assuming that we have a certain number of modes of which none are reflected and of which a certain number are transmitted so we are always assuming that we have two ideal modes injected or two uh, ideal channels, edge channels along each edge, which propagate in different directions, and that leads us directly to this transmission matrix, which gives us these solutions for the resistances. So the the details, uh, like the length of the edge segments, are not um, in any way important. And notice, finally, that this two-terminal resistance is different than the two terminal resistance we obtained previously for the two terminal device because the addition of another contact here in the middle even though this contact is floating um, apparently has an influence on the two terminal resistance so whereas previously we had half the, resi the resistance quantum for the two terminal resistance in this case now we have two-thirds um, of the resistance quantum